Everyone, welcome back to the Advanced Thyroid Series. Today, we are talking about oh, quite a few different things, I think. <laughs> it was kind of geared towards parasites and thyroid, but now I think it was more infections and viruses and how does it relate to our thyroid and how can we detect whether or not these things are actually happening in us. And with me today is the parasite guy, Dr. Todd Watts, who is a national board certified chiropractic chiropractic physician in Idaho, a functional wellness practitioner, and is licensed with the Pastoral Medical Association. Many know him as the parasite guy, but he also has extensive knowledge in functional blood chemistry, biochemistry, and in helping those with chronic illness overcome their struggles to restore their health. He is also the co-founder of Microformulas and Cell Core Biosciences and loves to research to formulate products which will change the world. Dr. Watts was the first to bring Mimosa Pudica, so that's where I've heard it from actually too, was from Todd, seed to the general health market in the U.S. He has an amazing health journey which has led him to be able to help others. So welcome, Dr. Todd Watts. Thank you. Great to be here. So tell me then about your journey then, because yours started way back in your 20s, I think it said, hey? Yes, 28 years old. It all started with getting Epstein-Barr virus. So at the time, uh, I had a lot of pain um, on my spleen area. I was talking to my dad. My dad's like, go get tested. It's probably mono. If not Epstein-Barr, I went in, I tested negative for mono, and then uh, you know, they want to give me antibiotics. And so they give me a round of antibiotics, which I didn't take. Uh, but my dad's like, go get tested for Epstein-Barr. And you, you have it because I had all the symptoms of it. And sure enough, I tested positive for that. And that began my, my health journey of within two years, I started seasonal allergies, uh, food sensitivities, uh, chronic pain. And as I come into my late 30s, then, then I had a lot of stress in my life, like a lot of people did back in 2008, 2009. When the markets crashed, I lost everything. And so with all that stress, everything else just really came out strong. So headache, I had severe headaches, uh, a lot of arthritic pain, brain fog. Come to find out with, with all these other symptoms that I had too, that I had chronic Lyme disease, Babesia, and then later on I found out about parasites being a huge, huge issue for me. I lived in South America for a couple of years, so it didn't surprise me that I had a lot of that issue and then heavy metals and looking back, I'm like, oh yeah, that same time that I crashed, I was on well water in, the, in an area that was known for having, having higher amounts of arsenic in the, well, in the water system. Oh. So as we know, arsenic depletes mitochondrial function and, and energy production, and then everything crashes from there. And so Jesus, I also- Jesus, is there anything you didn't have? <laughs> well, I think, I think this is a common <laughs> thing for everybody, you know, candida and- Bar, you know, Epstein Bar and Parasites and Lyme. That's so common. They all though. just go hand Everywhere. in hand, don't they? It, it, it is because it comes back to is your body making enough energy to support and is your immune system functioning? Right. And what's creating the problems and dysfunction in that? So that's, that's where my perception and how I look at it is I see lots of people that have, quote, Lyme disease that come to see me but still aren't getting better after seeing 20 practitioners. Why? Well, it's a lot more than that. It could be mold toxicity or all these things I talked about coming together and then, okay, what's underlying with metals and toxins that are causing dysfunction in, in mitochondrial function and immune system function. And are we all exposed to this stuff? It's just, if you have a compromised immune system, you're not able to fight them properly or, or are you just kind of a bad luck case where you happen to be in South America <laughs> and then you had the well water and then like, it, it just seems to me like nowadays, everybody's got Lyme's disease. Everybody's got parasites. Is this because we're just, our immune function is going down? It's not so much that this is new. It's just that our immune systems can't handle it. I think so. I, I think it's just layering mm -hmm. from when we're young, right? Our diets and what we're exposed to nowadays compared to what our parents, our grandparents were exposed to is completely different. We have so many more chemicals that are in the water systems uh, just toxins that are in the environment, that are in our foods, that are everywhere that we're exposed to that we don't realize we're getting. And so then that starts to develop and change things. And each generation probably becomes weaker based off of genetic expressions that our parents had or that my kids had because 
what I was exposed to or what they're exposed to. So it, it changed and shifts each generation. And our grandparents or great grandparents probably had much stronger immune systems because they didn't have all this stuff changing their genetics or affecting their, their body and their cells. Right. And so did you go from being like the bone cracker chiropractor to I've got to, to go into these chronic infections issues? No, I never did that bone cracker chiropractic stuff. No, so, no, I never did. I, I, the interesting thing is, is, is like, hey, this all happened in 2008. I was probably 39 years old, 30, no, I was 40 years old when the crash happened. And so it's like, okay, so I had these symptoms, but I didn't know why. You're just getting older, quote, right? Yeah. You're just getting older. I'm 40 now. This is what happens in life. It's just your 40s and you're going to have arthritis and you're going to have headaches and allergies. My allergies were horrible and brain functions going down. So at the time I, I was in real estate in mortgage lending and real estate. And with that, I lost my houses, my cars. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? I have two little kids, two years old and one years old. And I decided to go back to school to get my doctorate. And so all of this stuff was going on. So uh, while I was to get my doctorate, I, I already knew that I wanted to be uh, really well done in understanding functional medicine. I was taking chiropractic internal medicine course. I was, I was tutoring and teaching biochemistry. And so I, I liked the internal stuff because I had been around chiropractic my whole life, but realizing why do I still have headaches all the time? Yeah. I'm getting adjusted. There's something else going on. And once I, once I realized that it's an internal issue that affects externally, we're just manifesting on the outside what's happening inside. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I need to become a patient now just talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like 95% of society right now has all those things. We're all tired. We've got headaches. We've got all these problems, which is why I do these podcasts. It's like, let's mm -hmm. find out what's really going on. So in your practice, um, I'm guessing you probably see a lot of women. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how that is. But you, you know, more and more I'm seeing men. Are you? Men typically, yeah. Men typically have a stronger constitution, but nowadays the exposure to say mold toxicity, that's a it's a big killer. Uh, I, I'm seeing more men with even thyroid issues, which I didn't expect to see. Probably 80, 90% are women. Yes. But there's more and more men that are suffering and struggling, especially when they hit around that 40 years old. They, they start having metabolism issues. It just catches up to them. Yeah. It, it really does. And maybe that's with me, uh, with going through a lot of stress at that age, 40 for me, and then crashing. I, I wasn't able to work out for 10 years. Wow. Because I couldn't recover. I would fatigue within one set. I couldn't even do a 10 sets in, uh, with, with, or 10 reps within a set. I just, get, I really literally didn't, wasn't able to do that. So with clearing and cleansing all this stuff out of me and going through a process, which I now share on microformulas as a detox protocol, I clear the toxins so that now my muscles can recover. Mm -hmm. so I went 10 years without it. And now at 50 years old, I feel great because this past year I've been able to work out and get up at five every morning, and I feel like my life is back. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed you were 50, actually. Todd, you look good. <laughs> yeah, for those that aren't watching the video, go check them out. But you look healthy. You, you, I would not yeah, have guessed yes, it. Yes, I, I feel good. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought Epstein-Barr was mono. So mono is a, is a form of Epstein-Barr virus. Okay. okay now, so Epstein it doesn't always test positive. We're just testing the mono swab. Okay, because there is this big correlation between Epstein-Barr virus and the thyroid, isn't there? There, there is, and mm -hmm. but it's not just Epstein-Barr. I mean, it could be several of the other ones that we see. Okay. So okay. there's there's a, a number of herpes viruses that can affect thyroid. The top four being Epstein-Barr, varicella zoster, HHV6, cytomegalovirus, and a lot of people have just all of them. Wow. And you look at why, why is our immune system not dealing with these viruses? Why do they have such high loads? And then you, you realize, oh, parasites play a role in that. Well, how do parasites play a role in it? Mm -hmm. So how? understanding the immune systems is the Th1 and Th2 pathways, right? Which yep. in autoimmunity and Hashimoto's, like, oh yeah, I remember I heard about that. So the Th1 is where we're fighting and dealing with these viruses. The Th2 well, that gets stimulated with parasite infections. When that's stimulated, it releases a cytokine, which is an inflammatory marker called interleukin-4, and that binds over here to the macrophages that are keeping these viruses at bay or what's called latent sleep. 
And when that attaches on there, it starts, it turns on a genetic code to start viral replicating. So now these viruses start to replicate and suppresses the immune system at the same time. So now Th1 is suppressed, not functioning. The viruses get out of control by your Th2 is, is way up here and trying to deal with the parasites. And so then what I have found with success on treating people with viruses is that if I treat the parasites with the viruses, then and I get those two systems in, in balance, so much more successful in treating people or in helping them restore their immune system and restoring their health. And how often are those two coinciding together, the parasites and the virus? I, I, every time. Every time? Every time. And Dr. Holda Clark, she's a naturopath, PhD, she's passed yes. on. But I, oh, ago. yes. I know Holga. <laughs> so Holga, so she, she, she had that in her book. I figured it out on my own. And then I started researching and I found her book and then read it. And it's right in there. It said strongyloides right, causes headaches. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I figured that out. And then she talks about how the roundworm can be one of the key markers in holding the viruses, which is Repstein-Barr, which affects the, which is the pancreatic fluke. Pancreatic fluke, the liver flukes can hold, the, hold and deal with that. I found also there's a couple other parasites that can correlate with that as well. But, you know, there's a lot of theories that she had in there that, that I believe are true. And there's, there's a correlation there, what's happening. And it could be the suppression of the immune system. It could be the fact that they carry the viruses. You know, who, who knows exactly at this point in time? What we do know is there's immune correlation with it. Right. So when somebody, a woman comes into your office and she's got, you know, hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, um, and even separately, like if it's just, you know, just hypothyroidism without the antibodies, is that the same? Are we still going to be looking for infection and, and parasites? It's a really good question. So mm -hmm. that's where we have to look at the whole, the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. And that's where I put people's numbers on a graph that allows me to see where is the problem at? Is it really the thyroid? Is it the pituitary signaling? Yeah. Is it, is it, uh, because I've had people diagnosed as hyperthyroid and there's like, Oh, they're 300 pounds they're losing hair. They're fatigued. I'm like, how are you hyperthyroid? <laughs> Just because your T4 is high and your, and your, you know, your TSH is really low. Yeah. That's, that could be hyperthyroidism, except that if you look at T3 and reverse T3, there's almost, you know, there's like no T3 happening or especially free T3, reverse T3 is off the charts. Yeah. Your body's trying to make, you're trying to do stuff here, but it's just not functioning. And what you realize is that when you clear them up, they really have hypothyroid issues, not right. hyperthyroid. So, yeah. Cause it's quite common for reverse T3 to go up when there's infection in the body. Exactly. Yeah. You need to be tired. So the body can then put its energy into what? Repairing and healing, not out running a marathon. Yeah. I always say our bodies are so smart. And, you know, when I first started my own journey, I just was like, give me the drugs. I want to feel better. I want to lose weight. Like every, every other woman does, right? It's just like, close, uh, close my eyes and go in blind. Just give me the drugs and hope everything's going to be okay. And <laughs> so it was not okay. And it's like, ah, oh, there's more to this than I thought. And it's, we really have to understand that our bodies do these things for a reason. They're super smart. And when your body down regulates your, your thyroid, your T3, and up goes your reverse T3, and then lowers your cortisol, a lot of the time it's infection. It's not because you've got this adrenal fatigue insufficiency that everybody's talking about. So much of the time, it's we have infection and our bodies are super smart and it's going to drive those two things down naturally. Exactly. And you mentioned adrenal fatigue. It, it just goes back to, well, I need to take adrenal products. Yeah. And they just take adrenal products for their whole lives. And I think, well, there's a reason why you have adrenal fatigue. Yeah. Go back to toxins and infection and maybe even emotional stress that can create that. What kind of situation are you in, in a marriage or in some relationships or in business or what it, what's going on that may be causing those issues? So Yeah, I remember jumping right into it and somebody I read on this forum, I know, not smart, but somebody saying like, take Cortaf. Start replacing, like if you've got low cortisol and you've got reverse T3, I'll start taking the Cortef, high amounts of it. And I went in blind and I, it was such a big mistake. And it was, thank God I'm smart. And then within a couple of weeks I was going, this is stupid. Like my body lowered my cortisol 
and upped my reverse T3 for a reason. <laughs> and now I'm just like ignoring the signals. And I think it's so important for people to understand there's a cause for most of these things. So, and you actually say like, you know, one of the things that you said that we should talk about is the cause of Hashimoto's. So what do you think then when you're, when you've seen so many people's test results and you've worked with so many people, what are the causes of Hashimoto's? That's a really good question. So I'm going to run through a bunch of stuff because yes. we have to eliminate different things, right? Yeah. To be able to come to what could be causing the issues. So one of the first things I look at is teeth. I look at, say, is there root canals? Is there cavitations? Is there you know, a lot of silver fillings with the mercury amalgams in there? So what is happening here first? Because that's the closest area to your thyroid that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so eliminate that. From there, you work down into the gut. In, in the gut, what we, we consider is what is happening there. Bac bacterial issues can drive a lot of inflammatory issues that affect the thyroid. So the big issue in the gut, it could be a clostridia, which also drives up high oxalates. So then a lot of these people have oxalate issues too. And then it, it could be other bacteria caused by what? Either heavy metals from amalgams in your mouth, could be from a lot of the pesticides and herbicides that we see today that are that are... Um, th these E. coli and clostridia are re resistant to, say, glyphosate and Roundup. But then our good bacteria um, aren't resistant to it and, and are very highly affected by it. So then we get upregulation in that bacteria, which then causes a lot of problems, severe problems. And you can test that on an organic acids test. I was going to ask that, yeah. Okay. And then, then the other thing is, is then parasites. What's the role of parasites? Because I consider as like, okay, more than likely they have multiple types of parasites, flukes, you know, roundworms or nematodes, uh, and there's a variety of nematodes that can affect it. Some people have tapeworm, and it can be from anyone, no matter where you live. You have a dog, you have a cat, you probably have tapeworm, maybe roundworm, just from that alone. <laughs> and I have people from their water sources in their municipality water that tested positive for nematode larvae, which was very shocking to me. Uh, and they tested multiple neighbors and even businesses downtown to, to confirm their analysis. Wow. And this was an engineer and a pharmacist that did that because they just kept having all these parasite issues. And so, you know, what are you eating? What are you around? You just got to be sure that you look at that because it may not be affecting you as what you think, but what it can do is produce a lot of byproduct toxins and that then can affect inflammation and drive thyroid issues. And okay. not only that, drive the viruses and activate the viruses, which tend to really go after that thyroid like you were talking about with Epstein-Barr. Right. So the viruses kind of stay, they can stay silent until like you get into a stressful situation or these parasites decide to get like, more active. Get more active. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Do we all have parasites, Todd? You know, I always do that test, right? So I use my wrist or my neck and you just put a couple fingers there and say, okay, yeah, I got a pulse. That means you must have a parasite. <laughs> I was going to say, oh my gosh, what does our pulse have to do with it? Is it so <laughs> You're alive. You're alive. So, You've got so you parasites. You, you make a great host. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's, there again, our bodies can handle. We're always going to have somewhat of a load right. there. Just what point is, becomes a breaking point of too much stuff. And that's where I believe, uh, you know, they may even play a little bit of a role if we're really toxic or if we have a lot of metals in our bodies to help absorb some of that. But we need to clear and detox to help drive these infections away. And, and then not only that, but our immune system is highly affected by heavy metals such as mercury. Our energy system is highly affected by metals and toxins. And so candida problems, which a lot of these people have, fungal problems, a lot of they have, goes back to, okay, how do I get rid of that? Well, probably there's a, a dysbiosis going on because of toxins, which include all these herbicides, pesticides, and venom toxins, and and heavy metals. So that's what, uh, that's why it's so important to cleanse the body, get deep into the tissues and, and ridding the body and then upregulating the immune system and, and clearing out what causes downregulation, which could be parasites. And even Lyme, even Lyme disease, I've seen Lyme bacteria and protozoans that really affect that. Some of my Asian patients exposed to uh, different types of protozoan based parasites and uh, those are microscopic parasites. And then also like hookworms and different uh, ones that have affected their, their thyroid. 
Yeah, I've heard too blastocystis hominis is like very interconnected with Hashimoto's. And, and that, why is that there? So then it goes back yeah. to what I've, just what I said. Parasites and then these toxins and metals that highly affect the environment. And we need to help clear all that out because blasto is really hard to get rid of. Very hard. I, yeah, a lot of people think that it's a, it's like candida where we're actually supposed to have that. I don't know what your thought is on, on that one. I know that blastocystis is extremely common and some people have zero side effects from it and other people have a lot of side effects. I've, I've, I carry it and I don't, I don't think I have side effects. I do have hypothyroidism, but <laughs> I don't have Hashimoto, so <laughs> I don't know. But like my sister has it. I've got lots of clients that have come positive. That, and then you get on these forums and some people are like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm pooping blood here for the last month and super sick and they can't get rid of it. And they've put multiple rounds of antibiotics and it's such a strange one. It's very difficult, but that's because we're not going after the right thing. We're just trying to kill it. Right. Instead of rebalancing the environment, repopulating the environment and helping to understand that you got to, to get your good bacteria in there, especially the aerobic bacteria, you have to get the toxins out because the glyphosates, the metals are going to kill it. Wow. And heavy metals like mercury are going to really drive up the fungus and the candida. Right. And so then you have complete dysbiosis with that stuff. Yeah, so it's more about kind of attacking the heavy metal side of things and the other stuff first so that the blastocystis can be removed. Exactly. And then it's, you know, for me, when I'm working with someone, it's looking at, okay, you need to detox, but before you detox, you got to set up drainage. You yeah. have to be sure that you can, one, be sure you go into the bathroom, you know, the colon, and that blocks everything up. And then for the next layer up there is the kidneys and the liver. So that that's draining. It's a bile flow. It's everything moving properly. And then up from there, the lymphatics and the tissues and organs. And then the highest level is the cells. So to get those cells really clean, you got to be sure you can detox and cleanse out. Otherwise, it just the toxins just come right back up and cause high amounts of oxidative stress, which then can drive more autoimmunity and can drive more infections and, and low energy. And yeah. low energy is really a big issue for a lot of people. Yeah. And so it's a very systematic approach. And it sounds probably really overwhelming to, to my listeners here right now. It's like, oh, what? Like, where do we even begin? <laughs> and I'm going to get you to kind of walk through that. But I'd first like to kind of get into the, the thyroid graph that you were talking about earlier and just kind of showing us how you can identify different things by looking at someone's thyroid labs. Sure. Let me pull that up here. Okay, so here's an example of a 54-year-old male. And this, this uh, graph is, is put together where TSH is on the top, T, total T4, total T3, and reverse T3. We want to look at those all together on how, how they should be. And the lower two middle boxes are the free T3 and the, and the free, and free T4 and the free T3. So what I'm looking at is with this, with this issue is the TSH is going to tell me how well is the pituitary working. Now, if it's low, if it's really low and your total T4 is high, then that's okay. That's a normal response. Our ideal marker on this graph is right in the middle. So 1.8, 10, 150, and then 16.5. This is the ideal range. The high range is the higher number. The lower number is the bottom range. These are the functional ranges that we, we typically use in the functional medicine world. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking for is, is, is I say, okay, is it this box? Is it a, is a pituitary issue? Because if it's a straight line all the way across, it could just be that it's a, it's a systemic inflammation. It's, it's heavy metals. It's Lyme disease. It's all mold. It could be driving down pituitary function. In this case, he's responding well, and it's not a problem that way. The total T4 and the free T4, not bad. They're close. They're somewhat close towards the middle there. It could be a little bit better on the total T4, but the free T4 is fine. Mm -hmm. And then the T3, as we can see, a major drop down. Mm -hmm. So this, 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 uh, this marker on the total T3, where that graph is, it should probably be a much steeper angle going down. Um, and then you can see the same thing on the free, T, free T3. So when I see this pattern where it's a drop down and then it's a drop down, then I say, okay, there's a, right here at this line, the difference between the total, the, the T4s and the T3s, it's a liver conversion issue yeah okay, so if because if, if it was, was a, an enzyme issue the tsh would be lower 
likely. Exactly. The, okay. And then if, a, if the total, if the T4 was low, then it could just be a thyroid problem. And then what we see here is there's an over conversion to reverse T3. Mm -hmm. So now we have a high reverse T3, which I see people in the forties on reverse T3s. Yeah. So it was a major, it, they probably, this guy had infection and, and actually mold issues. And, and then we look at the uptake, how much uptake, and then his antibodies aren't bad. His TG is yeah. slightly positive. TPO is, is 15, which is below 34. So I'm not looking too, too bad at that. So I'm seeing that more than, more than likely this guy has a, an infection issue going on, which is affecting the liver, causing the downregulation, the conversion to reverse T3. Yeah. Okay. Then the next one is a lot different. So what we're seeing here is in this 50, 25 year old female parasites and Lyme disease uh, di diagnosed uh, on lab testing, uh, her TSH in relative to her free, uh, her, her total T4 is not responding as well as it should. At 7.8, maybe it could pop up a little bit more, but the 7.8 isn't too terribly bad, really. It's not, I, I see that and that's pretty good. Her T4 markers are really pretty good. Her thyroid's functioning. And then her total T3 and her free T3, well, her free T3 is really low. It's really low. It's, it's dropped down, way down there. So then we see over conversion to reverse T3. And then we're seeing borderline on the TPO antibodies and, and their uptakes just slightly below. So this, could, think, this could be my labs right now. <laughs> so That's what mine this, looked like. <laughs> this makes it easy. I would say this with this person, more than likely, the issue is going on again is conversion. Yep. And we know infection happening with, 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 with her. And then the typical, the next one's going to be our, our typical, well, mm -hmm. not typical, but it's, it's not good. And th there again, the graph isn't super accurate on this upper part, the, the one I had when it was prepared. 81 should be you know, quite a bit lower than 100 in, in relationship to this graph. You see a really slight, really harsh downturn. This is a 44 year old male with mold toxicity as well. And you can see the difference. His his TSH is responding. His you know he's making good good you know, T4 hormones, so it's not a thyroid issue. But then you know his his T3s are horrible. And then we see way over conversion to reverse T3. Yeah. Now there again, I go back. He parasites, mold, diagnosed Lyme. He's seen Lyme doctors, mold doctors, parasite doctors. And when he came to see me, we treated we we overall looked at all of it. And we said, okay, what do we need to do? So we need to upregulate mitochondrial function, immune system function, and treat them in the proper way of what's going to happen here. Mold and parasites were a big issue at the beginning, along with opening up drainage and supporting mitochondrial function. You can't heal the body unless you're bringing the energy up. Mm -hmm. So, I, I wish I had a better. Uh, I wish I wish I had a better variety there of showing opposite, some of the opposite stuff, but. Those are, those are the three I got together today. But that's what I, that's what I do because now you can see a relationship. Is it a, is it a brain issue? Is it, you know, is it a thyroid problem? Is it a liver conversion issue? Is it an infection issue? Is there antibodies that are up creating big infections and toxins? Yeah. So I, I have people that are over 5,000 on their TPO, over 2,500 on their TG antibodies, and we're brought them about under 500 wow. um, on, their, on their TPO because we worked so much on infections but also detoxing. Heavy metals, pesticides, herbicides. Yeah. So we, we prepare the body, and, and uh, Dr. J. Davidson talked a lot about this about the um, uh, the what do you guys call it? The drainage, drainage, the drainage. When it's lots on the drain, I know. <laughs> Him and his coffee enemas. Um, so yeah, he was all about kind of you know you set your body up for drainage. Um, but as far as then testing goes, so let's say when somebody goes, "Ooh, that looks like my lab work," or somebody's listening to us going. Yeah, this yeah, this could be me here, or they're mm -hmm. interested. What tests do you recommend getting? Like, what are your top tests that everybody should be getting if they have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's? Like heavy metals. So heavy metals. Yeah. Heavy metals. And, they, and which way do you high. test heavy metals personally? It, like, I know there's a couple of ways. It depends on the person. So okay. I, I, it just depends. If if it's a female and they're coloring coloring their hair. I don't call it dyeing, it's coloring. I got corrected on that. Coloring their hair, it's not, it's not going to be good. So you're going to have to go with looking at uh, urine tests. Mm -hmm. So I do a urine test, and then depending on how 
bad they are, how good they are, we may do a urine provocation test or not. Is that the DMPS one? The DMSA. DMSA, yeah, okay. Okay, so don't, you don't do hair analysis? I do hair analysis, but not if it's dye, if the hair is colored. Oh, okay, that, right. That throws it off, so it depends right. on the, the person. Okay, so then there's I not do, one that's more accurate than the other? <laughs> they all have their own strengths and their weaknesses. I've that's heard the that. problem. Yeah. That's their problem. So <laughs> I, that's why one test isn't a good test. That's why, that's why different modalities of testing is really important. And, and that's where I'll run the organic acids test to see, okay, what's going on with the gut bacteria. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All yeah. right. So, so go, what's going on with the gut bacteria? What's going on with yeast? What's happening in mitochondrial wise? What's happening in neurotransmitters, nutrition? There's some good information with that. I run a very comprehensive metabolic panel. Uh, not just comprehensive blood panel, really. And you see all the thyroid markers that I put together on uh, on that graphing part of it. And then depending on what else I think there may be, then I'll run some other additional testing. But that's where I begin typically is the organic acids in the blood. I think heavy metals are an issue based off their assessments. So I have, I have multiple assessment forms that, that help me look at, okay, it's probably heavy metals or it's lime or it's bacteria. Uh, or it's more parasites or, you know, there's just, I, my assessments really help me engaging where the, str the strengths or weaknesses could be in the body and, and then the history that we take on understanding when right. this all started, where it happened. So then I'll order additional tests. I don't like to do everything beforehand uh, knowing, and I, I don't like just wasting people's money. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think people get, so, you know, that it is a worrisome. I've just had to kind of go through things and check them off as time goes on. I can't, you know, not everybody can do all this all at one time, but I think it's important to start kind of knocking them off and trying to figure out what's causing it, right? Do you do the GI map test for the parasites or is that the organic acids test will test for most of what you're looking for? No, I just use symptom <laughs> uh, assessment forms and symptom okay. Up because really there isn't very good tests on parasites. They always okay. come back negative, and then we tr and then they you know they take products and they go through a protocol and they pass a ton of different types of parasites. And why doesn't it pick it up? It never picks it up for some reason. There are some people that are positive on it, but it doesn't yeah. typically be positive on the bigger type of parasites. And the other thing I then I lo also look at is I do an environmental toxin test if I find it it is warranted, or glyphosate test as well. Mm -hmm. I run mold tests on certain people based off of you know, their exposure or whatever there may be. So. And the, the mold one, you can yeah. take that visual test first. Is that pretty accurate? The one that's online, that's, if you can do it for free, the visual. PCS activity? test. Yes. Yes. So. Mm, no, you're not. Doing it. <laughs> I, I thought it was a good tool to tell people about yes. before they go spend the six hundred dollars that it is up here for an organic acids test so it was like okay well you know go go see what the mold test comes out as and then you kind of go from there i've had good like i have a client who just who did it came out positive and then so she went and got the testing and she, yes she has mold so i i use it we have run that in our clinic uh, for sure uh, we have that on a lot of our cognitive decline patients as well that that uh, need and see what's happening within that process so it can be very helpful. Yeah. So we kind of go through these and then it's about supporting your liver, supporting the drainage first and foremost. Now, do your, you have a very specific formula, microbe formulas. Is this, do you, go, do you have products for each step of the way? We do. Okay. Now, now I don't have, we don't have products for everything because mm -hmm. we're only at 10 products right now and we'll be bringing on another six products. But uh, I use 400 different products in my clinic. Oh, wow. So, so with, with that, uh, at, at the clinic there, I'll use a whole variety based on what the person's needs are. But the good, the base things, what, whatever people have, we said you're diagnosed with whatever, opening up the drainage, supporting the energy, cleansing out the gut and parasites and clearing out toxins and heavy metals uh, is a phenomenal base protocol for everybody. And, right. and the thing about what we've seen is, is, is People have done so many protocols, spent so much money, and then when they do ours, they have the this amazing breakthrough, and their life changes. Wow. And how often do you see people actually get off thyroid medication from doing this? 
Um, I would say I've seen people re dramatically reduce it, not always completely mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. It depends on that could take longer process. Mm -hmm. Just going through a protocol isn't going to do that. It could take a year or two years to really clear everything out that you need to clear out. So, yeah, and I guess especially if there's Hashimoto, there's been destruction of the tissue. There's not really bringing a lot of that back. So it's kind of still but, clearing it out, though. But I do see people with Hashimoto's dramatically reduce yeah. their, their stuff because now they're more sensitive to the <laughs> one that they're taking. Their cells are able to function at a much higher level because now the hormone can actually get in and signal the way it needs to signal the body. So similar to testosterone or, or any of the hormones, estrogen and those hormones, they, if it's, if it's bound in your resistant or insulin, like insulin resistance, you can be hormone resistant due to inflammation. Wow. So at, you don't need a bunch of the hormone if your body is sensitive to it and, and is signaling properly. So you've seen it help just women in general with just balancing their hormones, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Clearing parasites have been a huge thing for that. And, and clearing infections, all of a sudden, boom, they, everything starts to come up when everything's a shot. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's the process that we have to go through is understand that if there's all this inflammation, nothing's going to work well. No, no. So one of the things that you have in there that I talked about in your bio is mimosa pudica which yes. I just think of like orange juice and champagne, but <laughs> it's not what it is. If you actually look it up, you're going to get onto a lot of plant sites, which is why I was like, what is it? Where can I find it? And all I got in Canada was plants like gardening sites. Mm -hmm. And it, I think you guys were the only one. I don't think you could get it in Canada. I think you had to ship from the States. Yes. Mm -hmm. There it's interesting. My journey with that has been amazing. So when I was going through clearing parasites, a doctor told me, Hey, you need some mimosa pudica and BioPure, Dr. Klinghardt's company was the only one that had it at the time. And they were back ordered for months. So they used the whole plant. Well, I, I told a friend, now several Lyme patients of mine were wanting to get it to for treating Lyme and, and parasites. And one of them was driving through Nevada, stopped at an Ayurvedic store and they had some there. I can't buy it all up. So I got 30 pounds of it and we started using it and it was the ground plant and it was, you know, it was helping, but, uh, got to know the guys as a supplier and he goes over to India all the time. He's Indian from there. And he brought back one time, just the seed. What is this stuff? It's different. It's not mixing up in water. Very good. It's all sticky and nasty. And so he's like, put it in oil and have people take it in oil. So we were doing that, but it was sticking to their mouth, the throat. And, uh, and oh. so, <laughs> It's, it's disgusting. And, and after a few weeks, one of my patients, he sent his son over. He's like, hey, you should go see Dr. Watts. Well, you know, help him out. So he worked at a compounding pharmacy. He was a pharm pharmacy tech. And they started encapsulating the product for me. And it was so much better for people. Like, oh, this is awesome. So it took me a course of three years because then I, I, I tested it in three to four different clinics uh, from California and Idaho uh, in Wisconsin and in, in, in the Northeast. And because I really wanted to know how it worked because nobody was really, nobody was using the seed uh, for medicinal or for herbal purposes. And we just found amazing breakthroughs in people's health. And, and so then I was able to find a, a manufacturer that could work with it because of the stickiness. Uh, I tried doing it and mixing it with other products, uh, diatomaceous earth, thinking that would be good and it ruined the product. Oh, it didn't make okay. it, it ruined the stickiness of it. Yeah. It didn't ruin the product because people still pass some parasites, but it ruined the stickiness and the, it, wasn't, it wasn't near as effective. So then we realized that we had to be only that product, no fillers, no nothing in it. And I found somebody that was able to do that. And that took me all about three and a half years before we were able to really bring it out to the market a year and a half ago. Wow. Hey, geez, I got to get me some of the mimosa pudica. <laughs> yeah, you can't find it up here and no one like, I, you guys are the, some of the few men that I've heard talk about it on like um, Evan Brand, Dr. J, you, like it's kind of this select group. But from my understanding is it doesn't destroy the good bacteria now. Is that right? Right. It doesn't. And, and the thing, what it does is it, it just more than anything, a lot of times it binds and clear stuff out. Yeah. I've had people that tell me I took one capsule and two hours later I passed something that was two feet long. Or I took no. two capsules and I passed two, 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 three hours later, I passed something that was five feet long. 
And then other people like go two months and not pass anything. All of a sudden, boom, something comes out. So it really helps to clear, clear up all that buildup. So you get that biofilm buildup. Some people call it mucoid plaque. And by removing that, all of a sudden now all the villi is open and all the good bacteria could be in there instead of other biofilm garbage underneath. It could be bacteria, you know, toxic bacteria. It could be candida, parasites, metals, all underneath being protected by releasing that stuff, cleansing out. Now absorption of food increases. Now digestion of food increases. Now people don't have all these food sensitivities and allergies. And it just has really been a major breakthrough for so many protocols. And boy, I tell you, a lot of people that have, at least kids that have autism, have really benefited from it. And notice oh, wow. Hey. Comes out. Wow. That's interesting. For well, sure. you clear the gut, right? Big, yeah. big difference when you have good gut health and you're clearing all this garbage out compared to and all this toxicity that's in there. And so that's why I think it's benefiting them. Mm-hmm. And boy, some of the moms come back and say, wow, they're really smells, man. Their bowel movements are horrible, horrible. And a lot of people come back and say the same thing. It's yeah. Like, whew. And then after a while it cleanses out and you know, no more. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Cause really when you do a parasite, these kinds of cleanses, like you suggest usually doing them for like three months plus, don't you? I do. And, and a lot of mm-hmm. times I say six months to two years. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. What about the, gonna, I worry so much about the good bacteria of the guts, like with some of the harsh antimicrobials that are out there, like berberine and oregano oil and black walnut. Like there's so many that they're great for parasite cleansing, but they're also going to destroy your good bacteria as well. Yes. But think of this. Think of it. Here's an example. You move into a new house and you want this beautiful backyard lawn and there's weeds that are four feet tall. So you want a grass, you want a nice, beautiful lawn. You're just going to throw probiotics in there and expect it to thrive and grow this beautiful lawn. Or do you need to go out there and pluck all that stuff out, dig it all out, fertilize it, water it and take care of it first before you're going to get a good, you know, back to, you know, microbiome. Right. You're not going to get a good microbiome when you have all these toxins, metals, herbicides, pesticides, all these, all these things in there or parasites and they're full of candida. You're not gonna get it. You gotta clear this stuff out to be able to then get that whole system working again. Mm-hmm. So I think people have too much fear a lot of times and it's about rotating things too. Right. So our, our Formula One product is an Ayurvedic blend that people tolerate really well that has stuff like neem, vedanga, clove, olorina, and which is kutaja and trifala. So with these Ayurvedic herbs, they seem to really help with upregulating digestive juices, liver function, but at the same time, clearing a lot of the stuff out, a lot of spices and bitters in, in there. Nice. And then we have a new formulation that is more potent, which has a little bit of black walnut in there, but it has tansy, fetagoso, thyme, sage, and clove, along with some more biomolecular oxygen. And this product's gonna be coming out in the next few months. Mm-hmm. And and this thing, I have seen just amazing things come out of people. Just unbelievable things come out. People taking drops and parasites coming out their nose. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yeah. And then other people doing the, the night's like, hey, let's do a nasal flush with it. So a few drops in some water and do a nasal flush and then boom, parasites coming out their nose. So there's a lot of people that have brain fog and sinus congestion that they're you know, so much having issues with things here. The brain's not getting better until you get the stuff flushed out. And wow. going back to Holda Clark's work, yeah. recently I was talking to Dr. Newsom and he, he, he trained with her 20 some years oh, ago. No way. Oh my and gosh. And so I was telling him, hey, we're finding parasites in these people's, you know, coming out their nasal cavities. He's like, yeah. He said, yes. Holda said, it's the strongyloides, it's the threadworm. I said, exactly. It's what it is. So that's what I made the formulation to help clear that stuff out. And so people even just taking it orally in their gut were pe- taking stuff coming out their nose. Oh and cats and liver flukes, just it's, it's a very potent uh, tincture that it will, will be coming out. I've been working on it for a year and a half. Wow. And, and I test stuff, right? So I energy, yeah. energetically test what I'm blend is, and then, and then we do lab testing. And then from there, I, 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 I figure out, is this working? And then, okay, what else do I need to add? What do I need to blend? Oh, there's some holy basil in there as well. Which is good. Which is like, really good. It's really good. 
Yeah. <laughs> great for great for women. It's a holy bit. Great for women, but it's also really good for joints and inflammation. It drives the herbs deep into those joints and just releases stuff. So uh, I had some quite experience personally with it. But um, anyway, it's the lime stuff. It really was clearing oh, lime yeah. things out of my out of my. I had a huge flare up. I'll be honest with you, right? So I made my formulation, and I'm like huge doses, like big dropper fulls instead of instead of doing drops and working up. I just full on went after it, and and my my hands all swelled up, my feet swelled up i had pain everywhere and i realized wow this stuff is amazing and so i went off of it for five days and then started back up on it and i've been fine ever since because i i i, I dosed up yes okay <laughs> you didn't over od again on it i didn't know yeah <laughs> I, I tend to od on stuff just because i want to see i do that too i'm like how, hey, how, start taking all this <laughs> yeah like so, our okay. formula one i've taken 30 capsules two days in a row, like high dose, just to pound stuff. And I was totally fine. No side effects to it at all. Now no. I don't recommend people. I've been doing lots no. of parasite cleansing for a few years. So I don't recommend everybody doing that, but pulsing is something that we learn about and then we teach about on our Q and A's weekly. So people can understand how to do these protocols. They can ask the doctor questions. They can ask customer service questions and we, we, we help like, okay, if you can open up the pathways, you're not going to, have so much edema or not so much bad reactions to going after the infections. Right. And, and where is that? Where do you do those? So micro formulas, we do, we do a zoom. Uh, oh. So we put a zoom link on our Facebook page. So people can either watch it off Facebook or if they want to ask questions, they click on the zoom link and Dr. J and I each week teach about uh, a concept for about 10 to 20 minutes. And then from there we answer questions that people have and great. And it helps people understand the products how to use them, the problems that they're dealing with. And it's a way that we can give a little guidance of if you're having these reactions, maybe go back and do this part of the protocol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. So people can find these kits at my, microbeformulas.com and I'll put the link in the show notes. I think it sounds like an amazing product and I know I'm, I'm going to look into them for sure. Maybe I'll get rid of my blasto finally. Yeah. Well, the thing to think about also is our Facebook Facebook group page has a lot of really good information. People, people help each other out. It's a great community. Yeah. Parasitegroup.com takes you right to it. Okay. So parasitegroup.com. Parasite and then you can you listen to the Q&As. The Q&As are all recorded. And, and I always recommend before you jump on a Q&A and ask questions, go back and listen to previous ones because you'll learn so much on previous ones. Right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna devour that. I love information about this kind of stuff. So that's great. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. This has been just amazing information. And I think, you know, if any of this has overwhelmed you and you're listening to this and you're like, whoa, this is a lot to take in. And what you know, could I have all these par you do have parasites just because you're breathing and you're listening, yeah. according to Todd. So <laughs> just, you can count on that fact now, whether or not they're bothering you, we don't know. But I would definitely be looking into it. And like he said, and I've said, you just kind of start testing for these things one after the other for what you can test for and kind of just go from there, you know, and I think these are really important pieces of the puzzle when it comes to our hypothyroid and Hashimoto's and other, any sort of health condition really, because it's going to affect your whole body when you have these infections. Right, Todd? It is. Absolutely. You think about people have energy levels and the first thing they go to is what? Thyroid, right? Yes. So my, one of my biggest issues for my personal health was fatigue. Yeah. So I broke it up to three types of fatigue, general fatigue, mental fatigue, and then muscular fatigue. And the muscular fatigue was the last thing that came back for me. So I had to clear parasites to clear out my regular general fatigue. I had to then clear out toxins and viruses to clear out, uh, to clear out all of my muscle fatigue and my brain fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so important. I think that's what I think most hypothyroidism people experience or all three of those, right? I know I did for sure. Yep. But yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Very good to be here.